Hello everybody, uh, welcome back. Um, this is a request video. I'm gonna put together a request from my friend JP, who is an exceptional angler, uh, brook trout hunter in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, I'd given him uh, one of the flies we're about to talk about, uh, and he had a killer day with it. Uh, so here we are, we're, uh, he asked me to do a little tying video, so. Uh, first, um, just want to explain. It's a uh, it's a Japanese based fly, uh, and um, I call it the Yoshida Kibari. Uh, it's a f uh, because it's a fly that I saw tied on a Tenkara USA uh, video with a guy named Yoshida in Japan, um, and it uses a feather uh, that they call Kenbane. Um, it has historical precedence before this guy. Uh, if you're interested in the history of uh, Japanese flies and, and kibari patterns, uh, there's a great website in English called uh, My Best Streams. I'll put a link also in the description of this video. Uh, and, he ha and he shows some kanbane flies, uh, which is the basis of uh, the Yoshida kibari. Um, from over like a hundred years ago. And what Kimbane is, uh, is um, in English, is a, a feather uh, on the wing known as the Alula feather. Um, and I'll put a little diagram of where you can find that. There are only a few on each bird. Um, most likely uh, the Kimbane feather that was used or the Alula feather that was used uh, in the uh, flies from a hundred years ago was from uh, a, fez a pheasant species uh, that's native to um, that part of the world, to Asia, Korean pheasant, Japanese pheasant, um, and um, we don't have those here. Uh, they're very, very rare. Um, the most similar thing is probably just a hen pheasant. Um, but the Alula feather is on lots of different birds. What makes the feather kind of special, and I'll hold one up here from a quail, because my hen pheasant skin, uh, I've used all the Alula feathers already, uh, so I don't have any, but uh, from a quail skin, I haven't used them. Uh, and this is a feather. It has, uh, you can see it has a uh, stiff stem. Hopefully you can hear that. Um, but, the, but the barbs themselves are, somewhere in between a soft hackle and a stiff hackle. Um, they have the ability to do a lot of, a little bit of movement, um, but you can't spin it around because, you can't spin it around the hook because the, the, the central stem is stiff. Um, so what you have to do is you have to crush that uh, and then split the feather. Uh, the length of the barbs, though, is great. Meets most of your kind of typical fly sizes that you're going to use. So I'm going to hit pause and show you, uh, readjust the camera and show you how um, we crush the, the central stem. Okay, so I've adjusted the camera down so you can see on the table. So here's here's the Alula feather. Um, and he goes through this video uh, in full detail uh, with the 10 car USA one. So I'm going to uh, save some time and, and not really do it. But basically you take you take a hard uh, item like like this. I got basically this. It's like a big hunk of metal it's a magnet toy uh but you can use anything that's kind of hard i don't know if you can hear it yeah there you go maybe you hear it that as you get to the thicker part but when you push down on it you're crushing that central stem and you gotta do it a lot Got to try and get every little spot. It takes a little bit of time. It's kind of time consuming, um, but you'll 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 see that, and you'll feel the flexibility of that kind of goes down. And then when you actually go to test the splitting, 
uh, you want to do so from the tip and kind of pull here and see see if it's gonna split I still need to work this one a little bit but I took one of the other ones off and I pre crushed it um, till I got it to where it starts to split um, and hopefully you can see that here um, and we're gonna split it down to the base and you end up with two halves and then this is now something that's more flexible that you can wrap around the hook so i'm going to pause here and then we'll uh, tie the fly